Symbiotes are a funny thing because while yes there are a lot of examples of symbiotes existing, one of the most core things that people think about whenever the word symbiote is mentioned is Venom from Marvel Comics. He's so iconic because he's connected with one of the most iconic characters of all time, Spider-Man, and it's a very fun design that can be worked with and it feels like you could just use it for anything. But trying to play that in D&D is really difficult because there's not really any mechanical support for it or is there? When trying to play a symbiote, there are a lot of different routes you can go down with it, but trying to figure out the mechanics can be a little bit difficult. I've talked before with people about being a barbarian who just flavors the rage as anytime that you rage, that's when the symbiote comes out. You gain the second skin that then begins to control you and the abilities that are granted through your subclass rage is what the symbiote is. If you're a storm barbarian, you have a symbiote that has the ability to channel the natural electricity around you and strike out at other people. Or if you're playing a frenzy barbarian, it's just that insane amount of symbiote coming out and allows you to attack multiple times using your bonus action as you strike once, strike another time, and then a tentacle or a pseudopod comes out and strikes as well. There are many ways of going about that. But if you don't want to be a barbarian, maybe more spellcastery, that works as well. You can obviously play as a warlock and your eldritch blasts are just the symbiote striking out with long range pseudopods. Which by the way, Warlock is a great option because you can also use the symbiote as your patron, which we will talk about, or you can play as any other spellcaster. Most of your spells you can flavor as being somewhat of a symbiote-like nature, especially if you take spells like Tensor's Transformation or Otherworldly Guise, flavoring it literally as your symbiote fully taking over and allowing you to achieve things you never could have before. There are also a lot of feats that can work well with this. Pretty much any of the feats that boost your physical abilities will work out. Things like Athlete or something like that will easily be flavored as being able to use your symbiote. You're able to use five feet of movement to get it from Pwn? Well then it's just your symbiote literally stretching out pseudopods and sh snapping you back up. Or there are spells like Fey Touched or Shadow Touched, guaranteeing you these abilities that are caused by the symbiote within you, giving you more power. That's a lot of fun to try and figure out where they can go. And there are even race options that work with this. The plasmoid race from the new, the plasmoid race from the, the plasmoid race from, We'll try this one more time. The plasmoid race from the spell jammer materials. Thank God, finally got it. Is an awesome way of flavoring this because you can flavor it as you just being a person, but the symbiote inside you allows you to become a little bit more gelatin like and can form you into different shapes, allowing you to live that plasmoid like fantasy of being able to move around like that and flavoring it just as the symbiote within you. In fact, I think it would be a lot of fun to try and run it that way. Or if you want to try and do it a different way, try to choose races that have certain abilities that can easily be flavored as the symbiote. Imagine you're playing a half orc and you have the ability where you can just not die. That can be the symbiote keeping you up and continuing to heal you. Shifter is also another great option because you can use your shifting ability as a obvious stand-in for the symbiote taking over or beginning to adapt you to certain things. And then again, anything with ooze or plasmoids in general will really help with that as well in order to get that certain flavor. But the thing that we're missing here is if you're going to be playing with a symbiote, there's the obvious option of how do you tell that story with the symbiote? I am Venom and you are mine. Listen carefully, Eddie. You did not find us. We found you. Think of yourself as my ride. The interesting thing about playing a character with a symbiote is obviously you essentially have a second character. So how do you handle that and what do you do to make a more interesting story? Well, the first thing that I would do is obviously talk with your DM. There are two options the way I see it. One, you're playing two different types of characters, which is possible. I've seen it happen, but it's very difficult. Or two, have your DM play the symbiote. There are pros and cons to both of these, but the main thing you need to focus on is if you're going to play both the symbiote and yourself, it's really awkward to actually interact with the symbiote because you're just sitting there talking to yourself. And honestly, does anybody at the table actually want to see one person who's not the DM playing out important? NPCs talking to themselves. You heard you lie. Master's my friend. You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. Not listening. I mean, maybe it's possible, but I don't think that would be that interesting. So if the relationship between your character and the symbiote is important to you, I would have the DM play the symbiote and just tell them how you want the symbiote to act 
and let the DM take it from there and go with what they think is best. And that's why it would be fun to play a warlock because you could have the symbiote being your, well, obviously symbiote warlock, your patron. You would have them being the one giving you power and the only reason that they're doing so is because, well, you're their body. They have to work with you. I think that would be a lot of fun and you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. Ultimately, I think there's a lot of fun ways to go about that, but then there's the story that you could tell. Are you actually friends with the symbiote or do you hate it? Does it live inside you and neither of you have a choice or it refuses to leave? Do you need it because of its power, but you hate having it? Or is it something that you both have embraced and really want to have? Maybe over the course of the story, you have to learn to come together and eventually you will become the most powerful when you work together. Try and plan that out to happen at a certain time where you get a certain feat or a certain ability that really makes you the most powerful. Timing a story to go along with mechanics is difficult, but if you could do it right, it really does create the most intense and amazing moments. It's why I like milestone leveling because the DM can see, hey, something important just happened in the story. Let's give everybody a power boost because it makes sense for the story currently happening. More things that you can explore is the dichotomy between you and your symbiote and your worldviews. Maybe you both did embrace this and you both do want to work with each other, but the symbiote really hates violence and you love it a lot or vice versa. And now you have to figure out how that goes. Maybe you're romantically involved with the symbiote. I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but I'm uh... Yeah. You do love me! No, I do not. You do! I do not. You do! I love you. Yes, you do. Not one bit. You do not love all. me. No, not at all. You do. I do not. You. Not at all. That's the face of a man to love. With who? Obviously, there is precedence for it out there. And it's a story that a lot of people like, so obviously you can go down that route. Ultimately, you want to explore the relationship of having something sentient inside of you, whether it is voluntary, involuntary, or somewhere in the middle. And exploring that can be really fun, especially if the symbiote has the ability to take over your body without your will, which is a fascinating way to go about it. If you wanna explore that, that is where barbarians are awesome because when you rage, the symbiote took over without you asking it to, much like a sort of Hulk situation. And you could also use this as a way of exploring trauma that your character previously had before the symbiote happened. Maybe your character went through some form of horrible abuse and has been psychologically scarred from that. And so now they have this symbiote, which they hate. They hate the violence that it enacts, but they love the fact that they have something in them that can come out and protect them in tough situations. And so it's this very well back and forth relationship where you have to try and figure out what matters to your character. There are so many ways to go about it to make a symbiote story fascinating. You just have to figure out how to make it work with what you're looking for, find the mechanics to fit it, and play the best character possible. If you want to hear about how to play another type of character, I have a video right here. Go out into the world, make it your own. All of us should be able to live together upon this ball of rock. Free to be who we